Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 talk, where I'll be discussing the ability to create custom views for Dynamics 365 processes. And why is this important is probably what you're going to say. Well, administrators might have the need to see how certain workflows are triggered so that they won't create multiple workflows for the same trigger. See, best practice is to use one workflow for the same trigger, if that's possible, because obviously it's not always possible, but then to perform all of those actions in that one workflow. And also when you're troubleshooting, it might all come in handy to be able to filter records based on, for example, the entity that they run on. But before we get started, let me just go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Feel free to check out my blog at d365goddess.com. Follow me at Twitter at d365goddess or connect with me on LinkedIn by scanning the QR code on the screen. Now, you're going to probably say okay, how are you going to create a view for processes in Dynamics 365? Because what I want to do here is I want to navigate to processes. And here you can see a view that's called my processes, but you can't create system views for that, right? And again, take a look at all the different processes that we have. We have actions, we have business process flows, right? If I click here on this filter, we can see all the different ones that we have, uh, business process flows, actions, business roles, workflows, and then we have modern flow, but we can't create views or at least not system views. Well, guess what? You actually can use its advanced find to create your own personal views for that. And then you can share those out with other users. And I know that a lot of our workflows are moving to power automate but currently today we're still using real-time workflows right so being able to get that information in a view i think could be very valuable um, again this this kind of came to me when from my days of, of when i was still doing implementations and i actually found a notebook where i was writing about exactly that. So I wanted to do an article on that and I wanted to do a video on that as well. Now, as you can see, you have the ability here to start from any of those system views that are already there, right? You also see that I already have a couple that I've created here. So here I have all business rules. You can see here, uh, the category equals business rules. I'm going to leave this type equals definition and render type does not contain data so that I'm actually getting the right data. And as you can see here, I'm pulling in a lot of different information. Now I'm obviously getting the process name and then the category, right? Is business rules. I can take this off obviously because this is a view for just business rules, but I just left it on here so you could see that. Then I have my primary entity and here you can see the process trigger scope. How is this triggered uh, per form or an entity? And unfortunately we cannot pull in the actual form that it's being triggered. And then whether it's managed or unmanaged, the status, when it was mo modified and then a description as well. So the description for this, I'm going to show you where that is the business rules. And let me just go ahead and open that up. So this one does not have a description, but this is that description field, right? So you can pull that into that list over here, right? Now let's take a look at, again, I'm going to go back to advanced find and I'm going to show you now the process, all process. We have that, of course, all workflows, right? So again, we want to do the category equals workflow. And then we have all of these columns that we can just add, right? So again, just like we normally do, there's some other stuff on here as well, which is not super unique stage, update stage. I actually grabbed all of the most important columns already. So the primary entity, whether or not it creates on or triggers on the create, on the create, right? When the record is created, 
trigger on update attribute list is any of those attributes or fields are being updated. It's going to trigger the workflow, trigger on delete, run as run on demand. So can I run this on demand? Yes or no. How is this, this workflow uh, running as a user or as an owner, right? That's what we can do with real time workflows. And then here you can see here, there's a description here as well, right? So let me just go ahead and open up one of these guys so I can show you where that description is. And if you click here on administration, that's where that description is. So I would really recommend putting good descriptions in here because you know, just like regular views, right? We can just now export those processes as well, right? Just like we normally do with Dynamics 365 records, you can just export this to Excel and then you just have this list directly in there. But on top of that, again, if you're just looking to troubleshoot and you're like, hey, where are all of my, I don't know, opportunity workflows, right? Let me just go ahead again. And now I can start filtering this stuff out. I'm gonna say when a custom filter equals, my entity is, I don't know, let's just do cases, right? I'm going to do cases. And then I can say, look at that. I have three that are actually triggering on create. So can I maybe consolidate those, right? In this particular case, I couldn't do that, but right. And then what are some of the other triggers? Look at that. These two trigger on that field that's new underscore subcategory and then another field, new underscore category. So you can really now start to see, right, how some of these workflows are being triggered. And then I can just go ahead and filter on that as well. You can do a similar thing with, let me see here, system jobs as well. In the past, I've actually put those views, uh, for example, on a, an, on a dashboard as well. So let me just go ahead and pull that up real quick. And let me just, oops, do the same thing here. I'm going to go to advanced find. And here are my system jobs, right? So now I can say, this is a system job type equals, for example, all of my workflows or like whatever that could be, right? But, or my goal roll up, right? Maybe you wanna get, you wanna see if that goal roll up, if there is a status of a particular thing, right? And that's the status reason. So now you can say, okay, I'm going to put everything on a view and I'm gonna put that view what, that says status reason, waiting for timer or failed or waiting for resources so that you can very quickly kind of see what's going on in your environment as well. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and make sure to check back again next week for yet another video. Stay safe everybody and thanks for watching.